Okay, <clears throat> we have a we have a, a good show. Jay Leno is a very very funny young man, and he will be out here in just a second as soon as I introduce him. Uh, he is my first guest. He is a good friend of President Reagan. <laughs> also a very talented comedian. He will be appearing this weekend at the Carlton Backstage in Minneapolis. Please welcome Jay Leno. <laughs> Yeah, we have your magazine. Do, do you want to take a minute to, to clarify this? Good friend of President Reagan's? No, what just... happened was the last time I was on the show, President Reagan had seen the show, and one of his staff called me to ask me about a joke. Now, if I took time out every time a head of state called me, good heavens, I wouldn't have. <laughs> but you know that's he true. Really, he really called? No, he didn't call. Someone so from the staff uh, yeah, called me. But about he doesn't it. stay up this late, does he? Not when you're on, but when I'm a guest, occasionally he does stay. <laughs> he says I don't get a chance that often, but when you're on, I will Okay. Well, that's Ooh, very have, nice. You have I have own? a copy here of something called Rider. That's right. Rider magazine. This is a motorcycle enthusiast's publication. That's right. I'm in there. There's an interview with me. All right. Let's see. Yep. You here know, it is. You know what's funny, David? Picture of Jay right on the yeah, inside there. Yeah. Nice, nice drawing. Nice story, I guess. I happen to see you in Playboy magazine. Did anybody see this? You know what's so funny? You know what's so funny while we're talking about magazines? You know, the people from Playboy called me. And they asked me to do an interview for Playboy, and rather than do my interview in Playboy, I did mine in Women Are Our Equals magazine. This is more... I didn't, uh, wait a minute. Can you get a shot see, who's, who's on the cover there? Well, there's, let's see, there's Geraldine Ferrero, then there's a story on here in Margaret Mead. Here's an, <laughs> here's an interview with Gloria Steinem. Now, let's see who's in your magazine, okay. Dave. Okay. Mmm, Muffy. Mmm. <laughs> Muffy, do ooh, Muffy doesn't like guys who are turnoffs. <laughs> Muffy's favorite movies are Bambi and the L-shaped room. <laughs> you know what's interesting? I picked up this copy of Playboy to read your interview. Yeah. And I realized at age 34, it's not that I'm too old for Playboy. It's just that Playboy is written for guys 18 to 25. Mm. I think once most guys hit 30, you tend to see through the tricks Playboy uses to keep men interested in the magazine. Like in the front of Playboy now, they have this thing where they have pictures of four or five playmates, and they ask each playmate a question. And of course, each woman answers in her own words. <laughs> like last month's question was, what kind of men do you like? Now here you have these incredibly attractive women who go out with anybody they want, and they always give some Playboy answer like, well, I like dumb guys with no money. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know there's some 18-year-old locked in the latrine of the USS Kitty Hawk in the middle of Mediterranean going, hey, I could go out with her. I'm going to write her a letter in crayon on paper bag. How about, let me, let me ask you, how about, how about the penthouse letters? You ever read those? Occasionally, now, yeah. Now, do you think the penthouse letters are real? No, I don't think they're Does anybody real. think the penthouse letters are real? Yeah. See, and there you go. See, the penthouse letters are based on the assumption that any woman whose car breaks down on a deserted highway in the middle of the night is looking to have sex. <laughs> <laughs> and if you buy that, if you buy that, then the truck driver who stops to help her with a can of ready whip, this makes perfect sense. Really. <laughs> See, you know what I like? <laughs> I like the penthouse letters that are written by women. Because you know they're not written by women. You know some dork brain guy wrote this letter. <laughs> you know, your typical penthouse is something like, uh, Dear penthouse, I'm an attractive woman. And then she gives her measurements, as most women do when writing a letter. Huh? That's fairly common, isn't it? And should you have pouting breasts or supple buttocks, you want to put that in the letter as well. So, so people know a little bit more about you, the individual. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Your likes, dislikes, that sort of thing, sure. But the great thing about it is they state the fantasy so matter-of-factly. You know, it's always like, uh, again, from an alleged woman. It's always, dear penthouse, I'm an attractive woman who is an avid feminist and president of my local ERA chapter. <laughs> Recently, my boss asked me to get him coffee. When I refused, he took me over his knee and gave me a sound spanking. Needless to say, I became his love slave. Needless to say. <laughs> now, 
Now, I think any a woman... A plus B sure, equals any C. Any woman that's had, sure. had office experience has been through this kind of thing. We, so. we, have, a, we have an office full of love slaves oh, upstairs. That's good. That's good. Uh, now, do, do, let me just ask you about a, just one little thing here in the what article. What are you going to ask well, me? Just, just, uh, let's see. It's something uh, uh, so, talking about being on the road. Leno says, and every week, sometimes every day, I'm in a different city. But in each city... I always manage to meet a new group of motorcycle people. Sure, I always meet bikers. I always go to hang around bike shops. Bike shops. That's right. Now, motorcycle people, are those, are these outlaws? <laughs> no, no, David. No, we all can't have friends at Studio 54 in this kind of thing. <laughs> These never, are what you call... I've never even driven by the place. These, these people are what you call my America. What I usually do is go to where, whatever European bike shop is in town. That's are there right. a lot of European there bike shops? There are many shops European bike shops in town. Uh, that sell Beamers? What is a Beamer? That would be a BMW. A Beamer? That's cute. <laughs> you should learn some American slang. It <laughs> uh, Moto Guzzi, did I pronounce that correctly? That's Moto Guzzi. Is yeah, what, what kind of a bike is that? Huh? It's an Italian bike. It's an Italian what bike. What does it sound like? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Lavertas? Lavertas, also an Italian bike. Are these expensive, fast bikes? Yes, expensive. Do you own bikes. one of each of these? I don't own any of those. No, I don't <laughs> make the kind of money you do. I'm a working comic. <laughs> <laughs> and Ducatis. And Ducatis. I have one of those. That's you have Italian. a Ducati. Yes, Tell I me, do. is it a nice bike? Nice bike. Why don't you come for a ride with me? No, I'm not going to do that, Jay. Wait, no, I, I wouldn't for a ride else. with you once this in your car. This is something. All right, we've got to do a commercial there. No, no, we have to do a commercial. See, you wasted time with that I article. didn't waste like, time. No, this is, this is the kind of thing people want to know, like that Beamer deal. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, pause here for a commercial. We'll be right back with our old friend, Jay. We're back uh, with uh, Jay Leno, better known as the Beamer. Now, Jay, uh, last time you were on, I said, when are you going to favor us with your Elvis impression? You used to do a... Well, let me you used to do a great impression. In we, your, in we've your done act. a film. We've you did a film. film. We did a film. This is part of a kind of a Showtime cable thing. Mm -hmm. The name of the film is Viva Late Night. Viva Late, Viva Late Night. Night. <laughs> and in the film, I play a young Elvis character by the name of Billy Tupelo. Uh -huh. who uh, moves from a small rural southern town to a big rural southern town <laughs> to try to uh, raise enough money to help his daddy's farm. Now, we have a clip from the film. This You've will... actually completed film. Oh, yeah. This will be uh, all over the country. This will be opening. It's called Viva Late Night. And uh, I'm not sure what the clip is. You know, I do so many shows with these things. Can we run the clip? I think let's just run the clip. This and is you This is the scene the... where Elvis tries to get a job in a, in a popular night oh, spot. Oh, this is going to be good. Just take this and go to work. I've got to be oh, yeah. oh, Miss Morella. I won't let you down. I hey. promise. I'm going for a real good job. Bernice! Bernice! Get that out of here. Excuse me. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, that bus boy's going cute. I think I've seen him on late night. Hey, bus boy. My girlfriend says she's seen him on late night. What's wrong? I'm on my program. Oh, oh yeah? Well, I think late night stinks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, my mama told me that in America, every man is entitled to a home. Yeah, in my opinion, David Letterman's a wimp. <laughs> you better watch him out. When Mr. Letterman, he helped pay for my daddy's farm. I think the best boy's yellow. <laughs> I think he's chicken. He's a big yellow chicken. <laughs> I 
owe you an apology. When you started talking about that, I thought for sure it was going to be something stupid. Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> Feature-length film. Very nice job. Thank well, you very thanks. much. Now, did, uh, that uh, cost a lot of money, didn't it? Oh, yeah. 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 Well, you know, we, when you have an unlimited budget and you're working with people like Spielsberg, it makes it a lot easier. <laughs> we, we work with uh, Cord Keller, a very popular young director, directed this film. Now, David, I, I, I know, I know you got you. I this, know you this your, uh, really made you me You always mad. travel. Do you remember the last time I was on this program? You travel with your TV guide. Thank you, David. Do you remember the last what, are time? Are you in a hurry? No, no, no. But you try to come in, you see, you've got to keep the pace going. I know, I know. Things. Do you remember the last time I was on the program, I talked about Knight Rider and the fact that they had an evil twin on the show? That's right. One and of then the I saw um, uh, uh, Simon and Simon, and they had their evil twin. Tomorrow night, this is this week's TV guide, this is Tomorrow Night, Magnum P.I. premiere. Read this, please. Just read Magnum it. Magnum P.I., Magnum in Love, a beautiful woman and her evil twin. When is it going to stop? <laughs> has anyone... This is an excuse, huh? <laughs> Honey, that wasn't me shagging up with that girl. That was my evil twin. You know? <laughs> if I ever catch that guy, I'm going to punch him in the nose, I tell you. <laughs> Doesn't come up much. Now, uh, you're already sort of worked up. You want to get right to your beef? Yeah, I got some beefs. <laughs> you know, I, these subliminal ads that they see now, you see this one they, for some kind of brand flake? Do you know what I'm talking about? They show this generic-looking yuppie couple walking through the market, you know? The husband says, there's nothing different here. And then the wife gets like this Reverend Moon look on her face. You know, you know suddenly they're being followed by this monolithic box of bran flakes. You hear that undercurrent of satanic music. Ah, bran flakes! People with sixes on the heads are eating this stuff in unison there. Are they putting some kind of hallucinogenic in this? I don't know. It's a frightening yeah, thing. Yeah, it's ugly. And, you, and then when they use fear, like these American Express ads, these are very embarrassing. They show these noodle brain Americans <laughs> traveling around the world, constantly annoying people from other lands, and then suddenly these toad heads lose their travelers. <laughs> and for some odd reason, they never seem to lose their checks in any reasonably civilized country, you know? They're always stranded on the Iranian-Iraqi border somewhere, you know? And Khomeini's banging on the door there. A bunch of slave traders are touching this guy's wife all over the place, you know? This guy's thinking, if I had those checks, I could buy her back right now. Oh, what a tough break for me. We have uh, just enough time, I believe, for you to tell us where you're going to be now. Ooh, well, tomorrow night I'll be in Illinois at Lake Forest College. Mm -hmm. And then I go to, to Minneapolis, as you said. What are you doing in Minneapolis? The, uh, uh, Carlton Backstage. Is that a nice oh, place? Oh, that's a good town. I like Minneapolis. Minneapolis is a fine city. You know... Something they... real and happened, embarrassing happened to me there. What happened? I, this is absolutely true. I went into this bookstore that was also a dirty bookstore. So I was buying a no, copy no, of Ryder. Wait. Let me explain real quick. I'm standing, I said, well, let me go look at a copy of Wrestling Mud Magazine, whatever it is. I'm standing there. Behind me, Ed Bradley from 60 Minutes was filming in that bookstore. You remember the porno <laughs> one? <that was? laughs> I went, help! Help! That's absolutely true. But anyway, and then I go to... Uh, well, when, I, when will that be on so we can look forward to... It was on to... already. You can see the back of my jacket. It was you, on should, you should put, put that in your resume, an appearance on 60 Minutes. And it was on 60 yeah. Minutes. The next weekend, we go to Rascals and then the Comedy Works, where you saw that ad where my name was. Comedy Works is where? In Philly. In Philly. Well, and Rascals is in New Jersey. If, uh, if uh, you're near any of these places, you're, uh, uh, you're silly if you don't make an effort to go see Jay. I, Very nice to see well, you thank again, you, David. Uh, we got to go here for uh, station identification. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm.